Hi, my name is Fulton Abraham Sanchez. I am the CPA of the firm FASPAN Consultants, and today we're going to speak about how the IRS selects candidates for an audit. There is a case for the IRS creating a specific statistic system that uses algorithms with the objective of selecting people or companies for auditing. These statistic systems has been updated or is updated every year once tax returns are received. So there is a specific average created per industry for businesses that claim expenses and income and as well as for individuals when, when they report their income to the IRS. So whenever there is a tax return received, the income is compared to the average of the industry or of the individual and the expenses are also compared to the amount average according to the statistic system based on the algorithms. Based on these algorithms, when the, the taxpayer expenses are not on the average or they are far from the average, the IRS will decide immediately who is going to be audited based on that system. Make sure that, um, remember, there is no a, a single person, somebody behind this system preparing these letters, uh, the IRS notices that people usually receive. This, um, this is a system, um, IT system, that has been created for many years and is every year updated and precisely because of the expenses through the industry and through the levels of income that have been received uh, over many years, then the IRS has now a very, very um, accurate system for detecting misreporting of, of income, overreporting of expenses, and even um, any kind of fraud re uh, related to tax credit, like uh, the earning income credit. Now, how is that, in average, how is that the IRS um, audit in terms of numbers? For example, for individuals, for every 161, 161 returns, one individual will be audited. This is in general. And for businesses, out of the 224, one business will be audited. This is in general, not considered uh, limitations of income or, or a business uh, minimum amount of reporting. Now, in terms of a specific categories for auditing, there are three uh, elements that we have to uh, pay attention to. The first one is small businesses. They are classified according to the IRS up to $5 million. So any business reporting $5 million is considered, up to $5 million is considered a, a small business. Now, out of the 46, for every 46 reports that are, are given to the IRS, one small business will be audited. For individuals, in terms of the individual, there are two classifications. One, there is people with international income, with foreign income and also high earners, meaning that people who make either $100,000 or $1 million, uh, one of the two categories. Now, in here, um, and this, are, this is the portion most audited, international individuals, individuals with international income or foreign income, out of the 19, one will be audited. This is, uh, pay attention with pair to the other ones, like individuals in general, 161, one will be audited, is 19, uh, out of 19, one will be audited. In terms of higher, there are two portions. One is $100,000 and $1 million. In the category $100,000, out of the 20, out of the 23, one will be audited. And in terms of the $1 million income and above, out of the 48 returns, one will be audited. Now, this is in terms of the level of income, the highest level of income. But as we have higher, higher level of income, there is also a lower level of income. And for low income earners, the IRS is actively pursuing fraud with the earning income credit. Remember, the earning income credit is the credit that is received for individuals who report low income and they have uh, kids, they have dependents, because each dependent will be able, will be, um, able to claim up to $3,000. So the IRS is very, very um, active in pursuing this kind of fraud for, for the taxpayers 
um, many times taxpayers want to declare, even though there is no income to declare, they make up the income and they ended up receiving a credit. So the IRS now is sending IRS notices to people who are not proving their income with a 1099 and they report the income and the IRS is, is, is pursuing these, these taxpayers with the objective of um, with the objective of reducing the amount of fraud. For those people who are claiming earning income credit with less than $25,000 of income, out of the 72 returns, one will be audited. Now, what, will be, what is the cost whenever you receive these audits? Oh, I'm sorry, these letters. What, else, what is the cost when you receive these, these letters? The IRS usually have two types of letters um, for review. One is the typical audit, the, the, the letter that says you are going to be audited and they, they notify you, and the most simple IRS notice. That is, the IRS notice is the one, the letter that you receive when there is um, um, difference between what the IRS has and the records and you have reported. This is typical with 1099s or uh, income received from third parties like from banks, um, CD, depo uh, um, CD deposit, like certificate of deposit, or reporting from stock accounts that have not been included in your tax return because they were not received on time or you forgot to report. But usually this is very simple. But the cost of an IRS is to challenge, to fix it, is usually $2,000. This is for payment to a professional, to an attorney, a tax, or to a CPA to defend your case. Now, for the IRS audit themselves, because it's higher. The IRS has two kinds of audits. One that is by mail, notifying you that they are going to audit you by letter. And usually the cost that you pay to the professional to defend your case is um, $6,000. This is how much you're going to spend for professional, uh, professional fees, uh, advisory to take your case. And for when the audit, the audit is field, meaning the audit is a person physical, physically coming to your business to do the audit and talking to you, it's very it's much more expensive. It's like twenty-one thousand dollars. This is the expenses for a professional fee that you're gonna spend. In addition to that, there is a penalty of twenty percent. Now you have to remember that it's very important that you include all of your income on your tax return because the IRS. Even if you, even if you're not catching, uh, the IRS is not catching you the first year. The IRS is going to wait probably three years because of the amount of work, and then after three years, the, the IRS is going to come uh, either to notify you of the changes or audit you. And after three years, you will have to pay the taxes that you owe, the interest, and the penalty that usually is at 20% over the the amount of taxes owed. So, don't don't let these expenses accumulate or be, just because there is an inconsistency in your return. Find always a professional help with the objective of accurate reporting your tax return. If you have any uh, questions related to these topics, you can check the video list that we have here in our uh, YouTube channel. You can also subscribe if you want to receive more videos about this topic. And if you have a specific question about this, um, click on the link here in the description box of the video and um, give us an email, Fasipian Consultants. Thank you.